Good morning. I am Pastor Andrew, and greetings to you from the Modesto Church of the Brethren, online version for July 12th of 2020. If you are tuning in for the first time, welcome. I stream today from my home, and I pray that you are all staying well during this time and always. Just a note that you can type any greetings, joys, concerns, prayer requests, um, or just about anything else, questions that you have in the comments bar. So feel free to, to um, visit with one another virtually. You can also message or email this page uh, with, any, with any of those things that you would like to share privately. A few announcements for this week. This week's Zoom Bible study will be at one o'clock, so please email me or this page if you are interested in joining and are not already receiving those emails. I would like to thank Al for reading scripture and, and Elaine and Linda W for leading our music time. Thank you so much for doing so. Lastly, today's sermon is entitled, The Church Begins to Grow, Part 6, based upon Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 10. And now will you please join with me in a word of prayer? Again, borrowing these prayers and edited from uh, the Reverend Mindy Welton Mitchell. Creator God, you made this world, the mountains that rise tall, the ocean that carve depths, the wind and the wave, the winds and the waves. You made everything that lives and moves and you made us. In times of uncertainty, O oh God, we confess our fears. We confess our worries, we confess our frailty. We confess that our faith has been shaken at times. We call upon you, great creator, to work in us, to restore and renew our faith through your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Console us, help us to deepen our trust in you by our faithfulness and love to each other. Remind us of the call to love our neighbors as ourselves and through that love, May we find your love is with us all along. God of the ancient ones, God of our ancestor, God who knows humanity, help us to persevere in these trying times. Help us to remember that all things change in season, and this is a long season, but it will pass. These difficult times we come, will come to an end. For now, O oh Spirit of life, Help us to breathe deeply into your love, into your peace, into your call for justice. May we know your presence is with us now and always. Amen. Our first song is All Are Welcome. And I would invite you to sing as you feel comfortable. Um, for those of you who are, are not surrounded by others, just think of now that you can you can join in singing and not have to be concerned at all about anyone else hearing i'll play our start our music and then go back to the lyrics <laughs>
What a beautiful song and all comforting words and also words of uh, reminder to each of us. Um, I just wanted to let the children know that following uh, Al's reading of the scripture, there will be a time for the children, if they, but um, they need to grab a piece of paper. It can be scrap paper. Uh, it doesn't have to be any particular size, but it doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. So following our scripture reading of Acts chapter 16, the first 10 verses, we will be having a time for the children. When Paul reached Derby and Lystra, he invited a disciple named Timothy to join him and Silas. Timothy had a good reputation among the believers in Lystra and I Okay, now we will be having a time for the children. Move my candle out of the way. So I hope that you have a piece of paper. And so the first thing I would invite you to do, and this is why it can be scrap paper, is to tear it in half, roughly. Now you have two pieces of paper. Was that easy or was it difficult to tear that one sheet? I would imagine most of us would say that was pretty easy to just tear one piece of paper in half. So let's take those two rough halves and put them together. <clears throat> and tear them like those two in half. Now we have four sheets of paper, but was that easier or more difficult than the first time? Little, little more difficult, but not, <clears throat> not too difficult. Okay, let's take those four scrap pieces. Let's put those four pieces together. All right, now we have four sheets of paper. Let's try to tear those in half. Well, how about that one? That was a little tougher. All right, we'll put those two. Let's see, now we have one, two, three on each side. Let's put those all together. So 
So we have six sheets all together. Let's try to tear those. Okay, that was a lot more difficult for me. Some of you who are stronger, this may not be difficult at all, but let's put all those together, both halves again together. So we have, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sheets of paper, tiny little, not very big right now. Let's see if we can tear those in half. Okay. I was able to do it, were you? This one was really tough. All right, let's pull all those, stack all those up on top of each other, and let's see if we can tear these should be 32 pieces. I don't know about you, but I cannot tear all of those pieces when they are put together. No matter how much I try, I guess I could try a little bit harder. Nope, no luck for me. So I was thinking about that, um, as I was thinking about our children's time today, I was thinking about this exercise because I think it shows how with one of us, things may be, um, you know, it's easy to tear through one piece of paper, but when you put 32 pieces of paper, no matter what size the pieces are together, it makes it almost impossible. And so it is that when we come together, when we come, uh, when we're together as a church, as a, uh, we use the word community a lot within our church, but when we're all together, we are stronger together, whether that is together physically or if, even if when we're separated by distance, but when we are together spiritually, just like we are today and uh, virtually on the computers, but we're still on, in each other's minds and thoughts and we continue to, that's why we lift each other up with our joys and sharing as well as our prayers with, for one another. So. Um, thank you for, the, for joining with me. Let's have a quick word of prayer. If you would like to connect your pinkies, you may do so. Let's, let us pray. Loving God, we are stronger together. We are grateful to be together as a community, as a large group of believers to continue to encourage and uplift one another. Amen. As we begin our scripture for today, once again we have the Apostle Paul on the move to new places as he journeys from Antioch and continues to encourage churches along the way. As I was thinking about this, I was reminded of that old uh, Willie Nelson song, On the Road Again, and especially those first couple lines he says, you know, on the road again, I just can't wait to get on the road again. And for everyone's sake, I'll read them and not sing them. But that's what I was thinking of. That's, in fact, that could be the theme song to the Apostle Paul, um, not just in the book of Acts, but we know that he traveled quite a bit. In fact, as stated a few weeks ago, Paul is frequently on the move. It is estimated that uh, Paul traveled over 10, around 10,000 miles over his career and his life as a uh, missionary or as an evangelist or as a disciple, apostle, whatever you want to call him doesn't matter. Paul traveled for approximately 30 years, which if we do the math on that, uh, that comes out to 
roughly 333 miles per year, uh, of which Paul traveled. And again, this was all long before the days of air travel. And obviously, um, Paul, so Paul spent most of his time walking um, along the different roads throughout the Roman Empire, but also spent some of that time traveling by sea as well. So I lift, I, I have a map here that I've shown here on the screen just to uh, highlight some of the places where Paul traveled, uh, the, the places that Paul traveled within our scripture today. He begins by here, meeting here in Iconium, and then he travels to other places, Derby um, as well, and then travels up through this direction. So it may help, hopefully help you have a little bit, be able to picture a little bit of an idea of where it is that Paul has traveled. In addition to Paul, we have his previous traveling companion going with him, Silas. And this week, we also are introduced to a new person and a new face in that of Timothy. Previously, Paul had traveled with his mentor, Barnabas, but in the previous chapter, there is a falling out between the two. And so now Paul is traveling with a new group of individuals. One of the reasons why this scripture was chosen is because of the introduction of Timothy. Timothy is important, uh, not just today, but he is important in the history of the early church. And if we look through our, our Bible and look through our canon, we see that we have two of the letters that Paul wrote to him uh, later on, if you thumb back towards the back of your Bible. After Timothy heals from his pr procedure, the trio begins their journey traveling to already established churches and delivers to them teachings and instructions from the apostles and the elders that are in Jerusalem. And they travel to areas like Phrygia, which I'm overlooking at the moment, <laughs> and Galatia, which is here, but not over to Asia. They decide, or they decide to go Tros, which is not located on the map, but is up in this up in this general area. We'll be very vague about that. But not to Mesia, which is listed as this region here. So why is it that they go to some places and not to others? According to Luke, who again wrote the book of Acts. The spirit of, joy of Jesus told them where it was that they were to go and also where it was that they were not to go. Which raises the question, how did they know it was the spirit and how did they figure out where they were to go and just importantly, not to go? Well, let's go with those questions in order for a bit. A good insight that was shared during the Bible study this past week about how it was that these apostles knew that it was the Spirit talking to them was offered. Someone said, perhaps it was that they had less distractions within their lives that allowed them to be more receptive to the leading. I think this was a good point because the busyness within our lives requires us to be more intentional about what it is that we're doing. We have to take time away from the busyness within our lives in order to, to listen more closely to the leading of the Spirit. But also, how did they know which areas to go to and which ones to stay away from without their own preferences or biases pushing them in one direction or another? Because even if they had not been to these places before, they certainly knew the reputation of some of these places. And so I'm, I'm going to offer a modern day example and encourage you to uh, just to think a lot, either if you're with someone to think aloud or just to share, uh, think these the answers to yourselves. But what do you think about or how do you envision these different cities within the United States. Salt Lake City, 
Miami, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, Seattle, Omaha. Well, okay, maybe maybe not Omaha, but you can see how with these other with these cities that I listed uh, that you probably have some notion of them, even if you've not been to them, about what those cities may be like, or so you have some preconceived notions. So you can see in that, just in that short exercise, how it may have been difficult for this group to dis uh, distinguish between their own wants and what it was that the spirit was directing them. So again, how was it they were able to determine this? I believe that one way that they were able to do this was through the being on a journey with others. Again, it was not Paul by himself. It was not Silas by himself. It was not Timothy by himself. Rather, it was this trio traveling together, and perhaps there were even some others who were going along with them. But we know at least these three men were traveling together on their journey. According to orbis.stanford.edu, uh, the journey calculated upon that website from Iconium to Trous would have taken around 30 days on foot, averaging 30 kilometers per day, which if my math is correct, is about 18 miles. And so this journey was 896 kilometers. And my math isn't good enough to try to be able to translate that real quickly. But here it is that they were traveling for what would have been just about a month on our calendar, which would have allowed these men time to talk and to listen to one another and also to help figure out what it, which way they were to go and not to go. This was not a journey that took a short amount of time, but rather a considerable length. And so it was that they were able to, I think, again, work with one another, talk to one another um, about what it was that, where it was they were to go, what it was that they were doing. And that leads to this wonderful conversation, again, that we had during our Bible study this past week, when we looked at the question, what does this scripture offer us today? Because there's quite a bit within these short few, or few verses. Some of it does not seem all that relevant. And yet, what is it within this text that is relevant for us today? And we talked about that day about how each of us is on life's journey. And we would like to know how and where and when the Spirit is leading us. Paul, Silas, and Timothy seem to know at the moment where it was that they were to go and what it was that they were to do. And yet many of us uh, within our group admitted that we do not always feel as confident in our decisions to go left or to go right, to go forwards or to back, just simply back up in life's journey. In my own experience, it has been easier to see where God has been at work in my life when I've been able to look back and review what has and what hasn't happened, to reflect upon the places where, some of the places where I wanted to go and yet wasn't, I didn't go, and other places where I didn't want to go, but I ended up going, and then the places where I wanted to go and I ended up going there. And being able to look back over my life over the past years and seeing that in this journey of places gone and not where it was that God's hand was helping to guide some of those decisions, even at the times when I was most disappointed. Because at one time or but at all at all time, at one time or another, we have all struggled to know what it is that we are supposed to do and where it is that we are supposed to go which is one of the wonderful things about being part of a community, like I mentioned earlier in the children's times. But I'm, a, and so I'm a little bit biased. And so when I first think of being a part of a community, I tend to think of a church or a religious community that has gathered together. 
but then I also realized that there are other types of communities that exist within uh, for each of us. There are those close friends that are almost like family that we can turn to when we have questions and uncertainties, doubts, or just need to be encouraged. There are also golf buddies, knitting circles, book groups, and more. And I would encourage you uh, to share of those those places where you find your community. And within these groups, they can help to provide us with the answers that we cannot find on our own some, for whatever reason. And let's look at that a little bit closer. Again, specifically thinking about the blessing of being part of a faith community. A faith community can help us by seeing the abilities that that you have within yourself that you may not even recognize. You may have gifts or talents or abilities that maybe you don't quite see within your life, or perhaps you don't see them in the same way that others do. And yet others may recognize those that exist for you. For myself, this was being encouraged to explore pastoral ministry. I'd been told from a young age that I should be a pastor, and yet I had resisted that. But there are other areas as well. I think that uh, ministry is, should not just be defined for those who work within the church, but there are many ministries that exist outside of the congregation as well. And the really great thing about faith communities is not only do they recognize these talents, but they also can help you help to find a way for you to use that gift or that ability. Like, do you like to cook, for example? If you do, talk to me. We are always looking for someone to help us at the Ninth and D shelter that will resume cooking, I believe, this fall. But we, there are ways in which the community the faith community or the church can help to encourage the use of the many gifts and talents that exist. Within the Church of the Brethren, this has historically been to encourage people into ministry, and that has been a wonderful thing. However, we need to widen our definition of ministry to include most of life's passions. Another aspect of the blessing of a faith community is the collective seeking to answer the question, what does God want for this church? And evaluating and re-evaluating the answers on an, on an ongoing basis, not just one time, but to continue to explore them for, throughout the, the life of the church. And we are at our better selves when it is we are looking, are seeking to answer this question when we listen when we hear and we affirm not just the majority opinion, but also give room and space to listen to those still small voices which exist within our midst. All of the community can work together to help figure out where it is that God is seeking for the church to go and what it is that God is seeking for the church to do. On a larger scale, this is ultimately the question that the Church of the Brethren and every denomination and Christianity as a whole is seeking to answer. And this is where we at the Modesto Church of the Brethren can help to share our voice and our witness to those who are also asking the questions within our larger denomination and within, again, the larger church as a whole to figure out what it is that God is asking for us at the Church of the Brethren to be and what it is that the, uh, God is asking the Church of the Brethren to do. And we are, encour I would encourage us to share our voice and the message that we have that God's love is inclusive of all people, that God fights for the rights of the oppressed and that love is more powerful than hate. May we seek to share that message with the wider denomination 
may we also seek to share and live out that message within our own lives, sharing that with those who surround us and other communities within our country and within our world. Amen. As we finish up our sermon time, we now enter into a time of joys, concerns, and prayer requests. And I've seen Allison busy writing. Okay. Um, the first is from Monique. She would like to ask for prayers for the Scholler family. Um, they lost their Papa Elvis on Friday morning. Uh, she'd also like to ask for prayers for family members who have tested positive for COVID but have no major signs and symptoms. And she has a joy that she permanently was hired at SunPower. That is so exciting. Um, Sandy and Linda both kind of had the same prayer request for those who are missing um, being physically at church and being able to hug everybody. Uh, Elaine would like to ask for prayers for healthcare workers as um, we see a surge in COVID cases and those struggling to recover from this illness and their families. Uh, and I would like to second that. Uh, we're tired. Uh, Evan would like to ask for prayers for school districts around the nation as they make decisions about schools in the fall. We echo that prayer as well. Uh, Bonnie would like to ask for prayers uh, for her friend Lindsay, who is an only child as she struggles to help her aging parents with health and emotional issues. And she has a joy as well uh, that we all have this church community to share with so much and so much love to go around. I agree, Bonnie. And um, also uh, I'd like to ask for prayers for those who are running Peace Week this uh, year. Uh, they are doing such a great job and um, all the kids involved are going to be so blessed uh, to have this opportunity. Okay, I would like to light uh, two candles. I would also like us to keep in our prayers the family of David G. Uh, from, from our congregation who passed away this week. We lift our prayers up to uh, David's family during this time of grief um, and facing a new unknown. And I also light one last candle for the joys and the concerns, uh, the joys and the concerns which we have kept in our hearts and on our minds and yet weigh heavily so. Let us pray together and lift these to God. God, we have gone through a heavy and stressful week. We have experienced many concerns within our midst, those which we have shared and those which we have kept quiet. We pray for your blessing upon our lives and the lives of our loved ones as they go through difficult times. We pray for your spirit of peace to fall upon them. We pray for the people that we do not know and yet are struggling with health concerns, those who are within our midst who are working directly in a difficult, the healthcare workers in a difficult situation. We also pray for our educators and for our young people as they too move into an unknown future. We pray and give you thanks though for the joys which we have shared we uh, thank you for the journeys in which we begin, the new journeys. We also thank you for the joys which we have kept quiet. We give you praise for them. We pray that we may rejoice together, one and another. We pray for all these things, O oh God. We pray for your spirit of comfort and of presence to fall upon us this day and always. Amen. We will now uh, begin. Uh, we have one last hymn that we will be sharing here with, with you shortly. And so I would invite you 
all to join with us as we are, as you are able. So. prayers and our thoughts are with you as we each go forth this week, part of a larger community, and let us encourage and pray for one another this week and always. Amen and amen.